Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the Ford Performance Tune uh, for the Ranger Raptor. I had mine installed on Monday of this last week, so I've had it for six days now, and uh, it's, it's awesome, I love it. Uh, but this is gonna be a lot of numbers of zero to 60 runs, it's gonna be a lot of talk about warranty, it's gonna be a lot of talk about install, about the issues I had trying to get it installed. So while I'm talking about that up in the corner of my video, I wanted to show some clips from the Rapidan River and the Rapidan uh, Fire Road that I drove on yesterday. It was a beautiful day, it had just rained the day before, so there were like waterfalls coming onto the trail. The river itself was flowing so fast, it was awesome to see that much water. Uh, so that's what's going to be on uh, while I'm talking about this. So anyway, Rapidan River, it's about an hour west of Haym uh, Haymarket in uh, Gainesville, Virginia. Uh, really cool place. Another cool trail, and this is not even what the video is about. Another cool trail out in this general area is called Peter's Mill Run. Uh, you could do it in a stock Ranger Raft. It requires maybe like 10 inches of clearance because there's some rocks in the middle of the trail. But uh, anyway, on to the actual numbers for the tune. So when I first bought my truck, I did zero to 60 runs with 87 octane fuel. I did zero to 60 runs with 93 octane fuel. I did zero to 60 runs with a thousand pounds of mulch in the bed of the truck. Uh, so I've done a lot of different things, but the numbers I want to go over are the zero to 60 runs with 93 octane fuel. Uh, so I did, I, I took six of them off of my little draggy device. Um, and the density altitude is, is different when I did those zero to 60 runs back in March, April time frame. It was like 40 degrees outside and very dense dry air. When I did all the zero to 60 runs yesterday or today and yesterday, it was in the 80s and humid. So density altitude is a lot different. So density altitude is, takes into account the altitude that you are at. So we're about 300 feet above sea level here in Haymarket. Um, it also takes into account the temperature and it takes into account the, uh, the humidity or density of the air. So less humid air is more dense, which is kind of counterintuitive because when you go outside and it's super humid, it's like it hits you in the face. But actually water molecules are bigger than oxygen molecules, so it's less dense um, if it's humid air. And your engine likes just pure oxygen or pure atmospheric air, not a bunch of humidity in it. So that said, density altitude for all of the 060 runs I did back in April, May were in the negative. So it was like, because it was so cold and so uh, dense, rich air, it was density altitude of negative 1600, density altitude of negative 400, and one of almost 200. Uh, that said, they were all within two degrees up or down, uh, and I'll go through that. So it was 5.80 to 60 at one degree up, 5.9 at even, 6.0 at two up, 5.8 at one up, 5.6 at negative two, 5.7 at 0.5. Those numbers don't make sense. They wouldn't graph on a line perfectly, but that's just driver error. Uh, you know, little bit of differences on the launch, things like that. But the, the, what I'm trying to get across is say average density altitude of negative 1000 and average time of a 5.8, cause we've got a 5.6, a 5.9, a 5.7, a 6.0, and 2.5.8. So we'll say 5.8 is the average, and the average um, slope is about, I'd say 1%. So let me just show you the car that I'm actually looking at here. These are all the numbers in focus, right there. Maybe focus, focus. Ooh, that's better. Okay, so those are the numbers. All right. And all of those numbers are with no added weight to the vehicle. That was when it was new. I had no extra crap in there. I didn't have any of the lights behind the grill up here. I didn't have the bed rack. I didn't have the tonneau cover. I didn't have four tubs worth of recovery gear and hammocks and random crap in the back or camera gear in the truck. So I did the math and since those runs, I have added a fair amount of stuff. So the tonneau cover, 70 pounds, the, uh, the rack and this, um, flat mounting thing is another 100 pounds. And then I've got that case up there with a the hammock rack, I've got another hammock rack there, and I've got a road shower with, oh, it's seven gallons of water. So the hammock racks are 50, the road shower with the water is 80 pounds, and let's see, the boxes in the bed, I've got compressors in there, I've got um, different recovery gear, I've got a jack, I've got um, a bunch of different hammocks and chairs and little like foldable aluminum tables. But if you add all that up, I've got four boxes. Each box is 40 to 50 pounds. So we'll say it's 150 total, air on the low side there. Um, and then I also put sound deadener. I did the entire headliner, or uh, took the headliner out, did the entire roof, and I did all four doors. 
It was two boxes, they're 30 pounds a piece, so that's 60 pounds of um, sound deadener. And then the camera gear I keep in my truck when I go out and do all these things, it's probably about 30, 30 pounds with all this stuff. So that is 540 pounds worth of extra stuff that I have in the truck for these runs. Uh, and also it's 80 degrees out, it's humid. So the density altitude for all the runs with the tune are on average 1400 feet positive density altitude. So about a 2400 foot uh, altitude difference or density altitude difference between the stock runs and the with the tune. So that being said, the runs with the tune, uh, I did a 5.8, a 5.6, a 5.4, a 5.6, and a 5.8. Those numbers don't seem impressive when you compare them to the 5.8 I did before. But then you take into account that it's 2,500 feet of density altitude higher, 2,400, and 540 pounds worth of crap. When I did my zero to 60 runs with 1,000 pounds or 800 pounds worth of mulch, I was in the eights. Um, granted, I wasn't launching it as hard as I could because I didn't really want to, this is when the truck was still new, I didn't want to break anything, um, but even if it was sevens, I'm more than a second faster with a little bit less weight, but that's the equivalent, like six or 800 or 1,000 pounds worth of mulch versus 540 pounds worth of stuff. I mean, we're comparing apples to oranges, but I'm just trying to get some different numbers out there. So anyway, stock, empty, 5.8 average, density altitude of negative 1,000. With the tune, with 540 pounds worth of stuff and density altitude of uh, 1,400 or 1,000, whatever, say it's 2,000 higher, we're still at a 5.6, 5.8, 5.4, 5, 6, 5, 8, 5, 4, 5, 6, and 5.8, so average of a 5.6. So it's 0.2 seconds faster with worse air, worse conditions, and 540 extra pounds. And then you can also just feel the difference when you're driving it. So the transmission tune is the biggest difference. Um, when you first when you first drive the truck before it's tuned or anything, it feels pretty good. 10 speed, it's always shifting. It's always right where it needs to be. It shifts pretty darn smooth. But when I got the tune done and I drove home from the dealership, that's the first thing I noticed. I didn't notice the extra power or the throttle response or anything like that or the extra boost because I didn't even have that gauge on when I first got in it uh, after I got the tune. I noticed how much smoother it was shifting and how much um, it, it didn't jerk at all in the shifts. It didn't really jerk before unless you're really getting on it. But it did, it did a world of difference just in the drivability of it with the transmission tune. When I was coming home, it was raining. It had been raining for the first three days I had the tune, so I never really got on it, uh, except for like a couple in third gear on a highway that was pretty dry, just seeing how it would do. And you can feel the difference, but it doesn't feel like what you would think 100 foot-pounds of torque and 50 horsepower is. But really, those numbers are at wide open throttle. Not very often you're foot to the floor when you're driving in regular conditions, unless you're out on a track or a drag strip, or if you're really excited at a green light or something like that. But you don't notice it. So I've heard a lot of other people say, oh man, I got the tune and it's, it's a little bit quicker than stock, but it's not that great. I'm wondering if they're not driving it as hard as your mind is thinking you should when you get another 100 foot pounds of torque or whatever. So I don't even know how I'm trying to say this, but really, Everyday driving, you're not gonna notice that much of a difference. Um, if you're just, you know, ease on the throttle from a, a green light, the throttle response is nothing crazy. Um, if you're in sport mode, it's a little bit more aggressive. In normal mode, I would say the throttle response really didn't change much at all in that first couple days. The other thing that I found kind of interesting is I've driven about 500 miles with this new tune now. It really didn't come alive until about the 200 or 300 mile mark. Granted, I was driving in the rain before that, so maybe this is just my experience, but I noticed today for the first time in normal mode, the throttle response was a whole lot better. The power was there uh, more noticeably at 400 miles or 500 miles in with the tune than it was on day one. Um, and it's, it's almost like normal mode now feels like sport mode used to, uh, and now sport mode is just, just that much better. Um, so that's pretty much my experience with it. It is definitely more power. I don't have access to a dyno or I don't wanna pay for access to a dyno. There are plenty of people that have already done that. I did see one dude post some draggy numbers uh, that his stock truck was doing a 5.60 to 60 and with the tune he was at 4.9 to 4.95. So that's like more than a half second and it's a sub five second zero to 60. That's incredible for a big, heavy, not big, but for a heavy truck like this. Um, 
with the, the amount of unsprung weight, obviously I've got the beadlock capable wheels. Those are a lot heavier. That's really the only difference. But um, the regular wheels are gonna be quicker because you have less rotational mass, things like that. Um, so wrap that up. The tune is awesome. Transmission tune in itself is worth it to me. And then the added power is just fantastic. So now let's get into the installation. So when I bought my tune, I called a bunch of dealerships. My local dealership that I bought the truck from doesn't purchase or doesn't do for performance parts. Uh, my local dealership that I get the oil changed at because I bought five oil changes when I bought the truck for some reason. I don't know why I did that because I like doing it myself. Uh, but they said I had the points and I could use it for that. So I did. Uh, they wouldn't buy it or install it. I, I ended up buying it online at Lethal Performance, which is a Ford Performance Parts authorized retailer. So it was good to go there. Uh, and it was actually way cheaper. So from Ford proper, I think it's 850 or 825, from Lethal Performance, I got it during their Labor Day sale and I paid less than 700, including the tax and the shipping and everything. So that was really great. Uh, and then when it got here, I had to call five different dealers before I found one that was willing to do the work which seems crazy to me. This is a Ford racing, Ford performance product. It seems like every dealership should be able to install this, but a lot of the, and I think it's the technicians are all willing to do it. It was the service advisors that just didn't want to deal with the hassle or they didn't know about it or they weren't sure what I was talking about. And I was so clear with them. I said, it's a Ford performance part. You can buy it from Ford. It's your stuff. Why can't you do it? But uh, like I said, I finally found a dealership that would put it in when I got there. The, the tech was ready to go, he, he started the work, but the voucher number that comes with your tune didn't match up to my email address associated with my Ford Performance account, which I didn't even yet know I needed to have. So I created my Ford Performance account while I was waiting there in the lobby when they told me about it. And then they had an issue. Ford Performance had to send them a new voucher number, but it took them a whole day. The second day, the Ford tech was in the hospital for four days. So it ended up taking a week to get the Ford tune put on my truck, but it all worked out. The tech was fine, out of the hospital, feeling good. Uh, and the fact that it took them five days to do it or a week to do it, they ended up doing it for me for free at no charge uh, because it wasn't my fault that Ford Performance had an issue with the voucher. The tuner was in good shape. The truck was in good shape. It was a Ford Performance thing. And the Ford dealership didn't want to charge me because Ford Performance uh, was taking too long to get on the vouchers. That said, they were going to charge me $233. They showed me the invoice. So that was what they were gonna charge me. I've had other people tell me it was $150. Uh, up until two days ago, the most I heard of was $400, which, I mean, if, you, if they tell you it takes a specialty tech and it's gonna take two hours and a specialty tech is $200 an hour, that makes sense. But then I saw on Facebook, someone paid $800 to get it installed, plus the 800 something that you had to buy to get it. So to me, 800 is a ton to get a tune installed. Um, but if that's the only game in town and you wanna be sure you have that repair order with an ACE certified mechanic on it to go through Ford Performance, it makes sense to do it. It's just a tough pill to swallow and that's a bummer that that dude had to deal with that. Um, you can also go to any ACE certified mechanic uh, as long as you get a repair order that says what they did and there's, a, there's like their certificate number or whatever that Ford Performance can validate, it is an ACE certified mechanic. So I called and talked to Ford Performance proper about the warranty. And they said, you have to get installed by an ACE certified mechanic or a dealership and give us that repair order and then we will activate your warranty. You're good for three years, 36,000 miles from the in-service date of your vehicle, not the date you put the tune on it. So for me, I put the tune on it at 10,000 miles. So I will have a warranty for the tune for 26,000 miles basically. Um, or three years, whichever comes first. So I've had it for six months. So I have two and a half years or 26,000 miles of worry-free driving, I guess, with this tune. But to be honest, I talked to the tech uh, once he was back from the hospital. He's a really good dude. And he actually took 15 minutes to chat with me. And I have never tuned cars. I always buy stock car cars that are already pretty fun to drive. Um, I've always wanted to tune them, but I'm always hesitant because I do like having that warranty if I buy a new car knowing that everything's covered. So I had never done it in the past. I've talked to plenty of people who said, I've tuned every single car I've had, 100,000 miles on them all, never an issue. So a lot of it is how you drive your vehicle, how aggressive the tune is. But when I was talking to the, and this guy was the shop foreman, he's the one who did it. He said, Ford Performance tunes are, are, are really, really good. He doesn't see them coming back into the shop for mechanical issues. Uh, really, he said the only one he's seen coming in was a Roush, uh, or maybe it was a Shelby, 
F-150 with like 700 horsepower with a supercharger. He said, that guy drives the hell out of it. And uh, he's been back in like three different times because he's blown up the supercharger. He, but it sounded to me like that was a driver thing, not the vehicle or the, the, uh, the Ford performance parts. That being said, he said these tunes are the way to go. And especially this one with the numbers you're getting, the 100 foot pounds of torque and 50 horsepower, incredible. So uh, that's it for the install. It took me a while. They didn't end up charging me, but expect to pay anywhere from 150 to, I'd say, 150 to 300 is going to be your ballpark average, the high end of 400 with that one extreme of 800. So just know that those are the numbers. I've seen a lot of people asking how much does it cost. That's my answer to you. Anywhere from 150 on the low end to 300 on the, the middle to high end. And then depending on where you are, it might be 400 or more. Uh, and just if that's the case from your dealer, find an ACE certified mechanic and ask them how much they'll charge if they'll even do it. So I called one tuning shop around here that only does imports and they said, we won't even touch a Ford, which makes no sense to me. Uh, and I found another independent mechanic that would do it, but I never got a price from him. He was my backup if the dealership that I went to wasn't able to uh, get it taken care of. So that's the install. Now let's talk warranty. So, and I mentioned it a little bit, but if you bought an extended warranty, it's not a waste of money if you get this tune. So your warranty from Ford Motor Company is three years, 30, three years, 36,000 miles bumper to bumper. That's everything on your vehicle. Um, so if your infotainment system, you know, stops working or if your air conditioner or if uh, the dome light stops working um, or your TPMS sensors are reading the wrong numbers and telling you you have no pressure when you know you have 38 PSI or something like that, that's all still covered even if you have the tune for three years, 36,000 miles on your bumper to bumper. Your powertrain warranty is still valid as well. If your radiator, if a radiator ho hose blows off because the clamp wasn't properly installed at the factory and you overheat your engine and you crack the block or you crack the head, that's not the tune's fault. That will still be covered through your entire extended warranty or through your five year, 60,000 mile warranty through Ford Motor Company. Now, if you um, blow a head gasket or if you bend a rod or if you just grenade your motor because you were driving that thing at, at just bouncing it off the rev limiter for minutes at a time and the tune, and they can say the tune caused this because it got way too hot or whatever it was, uh, then they will say Ford Motor Company's five year, 60,000 mile warranty is not covering this, but Ford Performance Parts warranty will come in. You still get the work done at your Ford dealership. It's just covered by Ford Performance Parts. Still zero out of pocket for you. Now it's on uh, Ford Performance Parts to cover that. Once you hit your three year, 36,000 miles, uh, from the Ford Performance, that's where you get into that middle ground of, I paid all this extra money for an extra warranty, or I bought a new truck, I wanna make sure I'm covered for everything that could happen to it for the whole five years, 60,000 miles. If that's the case, this truck is amazing stock. Maybe steer clear of the tune. I mean, I love it, but this truck was super fun even without the tune. So, I don't wanna say don't get the tune because I'm super glad I got it, but I totally get it if that's where you're at. If your warranty is very important to you, which I totally get, my warranty has saved, warranties in the past have saved me tens of thousands of dollars on entirely new motors or entirely new fuel systems or things like that that happened because it was a defect from the uh, manufacturer. I still think those things would have been covered even with the tune because those were factory uh, issues. It wasn't an abuse from my part, but that said, Warranties are peace of mind. You're already paying a significant amount for these trucks. The last thing you want to do is have to buy a new engine because you got this tune that you thought was going to be awesome and it blew up and then you're not covered under warranty. So it's, it's everybody's own comfort zone. When it comes to aftermarket tunes, the idea is you pay to play. If you're going to take your vehicle above and beyond what the manufacturer uh, tuned it to and what they recommend, they're not going to be covering your warranty or covering you under warranty for stuff that you've done aftermarket. That's just, you know, part of the game of, of uh, you know, tuning cars. The fact that Ford authorized this tune, and they've done it on other cars, other vehicles in the past. There are a lot of Ford Performance tunes out there for different vehicles that are covered under these warranties. Uh, they're not going to authorize a tune that they're constantly covering under warranty. So they've done the work. They've done the math. You're going to see a lot of people say that Ford Performance tune is garbage compared to the Livermore or the, um, 
Montune or you know their their private tuner that does custom tunes. Yeah, they're taking you way further up on the ragged edge of what your entire drivetrain is capable of. You might you might uh, blow out your rear differential. You might break an axle. You might um, you know you might grenade your entire transmission. So that's the kind of stuff where that's what kept me hesitant in the past to tune my vehicles. But that said. I mentioned earlier, I've talked to people that have tuned every car they've had and they never had issues. So now I'm just rambling. I just, I want to give you as much information, the stuff that I learned uh, in my journey of finding out about this tune and I don't regret it at all. Uh, I am the type that, you know, constantly has buyer's remorse for things that I've done or things that I've bought or uh, choices I've made but at no point do I regret buying the Ranger Raptor, and it's only been a week, but I absolutely do not regret the tune that I put on here uh, either. What I will say is I heard some people say like, oh, I live in Wyoming, I'm a little bit concerned about driving in the snow with the throttle response, is the, the extra 100 uh, foot-pounds of torque gonna make it undrivable in snow? I haven't driven this in snow, but today, or, or yesterday when I was out on the trail and what this video is showing, uh, it was very wet, slippery rocks and everything, and at no point did I feel like I was spinning the tires or anything like that. It drove on the trail exactly like it did before the tune. So the throttle response in off-road mode uh, is very similar. It's very, um, very intuitive. It's not like you step on it and everything starts spinning and goes crazy. Uh, so I would say the drivability around town and on trails is as good, if not with the tune to the transmission, better than it was stock. Um, as far as the power, you don't really feel that extra power unless you're trying to, unless you're really getting on it. And you're not getting on it. When you're trying to climb up rocks or climb up like, or, or on a icy road, you're not smashing your foot to the floor. You're, you're kind of driving like you've got an eggshell between your foot and the gas pedal. So if you drive carefully, uh, the throttle response is not gonna get away from you and you're not gonna go spinning off the road because you have an extra 100, um, 100 foot pounds of torque or 50 horsepower. Um, that's really it. I've rambled a lot, but I wanted to talk enough that you could see this cool video uh, from when I was out on the trail. And whatever time is left is just gonna be the video and not me talking. So cheers, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're on the fence about the tune, I would say if you're comfortable with the warranty situation, go for it because you're not gonna find too many other uh, chances to get another, another 50 horsepower and 100 foot pounds of torque for less than $1,000 and keep some sort of warranty. It's just incredible. So that's it. Have a good one, guys.
It's over!